Hi students. Uh, I'd like to start out this video lecture for chapter 5 by doing a finger play. I know you all are working on finger plays, so here's one for you. One, two, how do you do? Three, four, sit on the floor. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten. We're all done again. You could redo that with the kids depending on their interest. Your chapter's talking about language and literacy. Uh, such an important topic. Uh, I'd like to point out some of the main things about it. There is a difference between language and literacy. Language refers to any human speech, written symbols, or any means of communicating. When children are listening to someone, they are demonstrating receptive speech. When they are talking or speaking, they're using expressive language. Language development does follow a predictable sequence. And it's important to remember that language improves and is learned through using it. The section in your test, text about developmental stages uh, on page 93, they list the stages from a baby's cry, birth, up to three months, through multi-word speech, which is three or four years old. And from infancy, it's so important to talk with children, even if they're not able to understand what you're saying. They are hearing the spoken word and need that hearing to be able to speak as they mature developmentally. Literacy, specifically emergent literacy, is the term used for young children, uh, preschool infancy through preschool age. It's the process of developing awareness about reading and writing before they can actually read or write. It's emergent, emerging. It's important to understand that literacy development is a lifelong process. And it includes four things, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. It should be noted that vocabulary by age three, whatever vocabulary that child has, is strongly associated with their language skills at the age of nine and 10. So maybe you can see why that we stress so much bringing out what children are doing in the classroom using vocabulary. They may not understand the, uh, what it means, but they hear that vocabulary word and they eventually come to understand that. And that vocabulary use is in their little brains and it really helps with language and literacy as they get older. What about literacy in the environment? There should be literacy experiences not only in the library area, but in every area of the classroom and in the curriculum. Your text refers to the Language Arts Center, and that's a place, usually a quiet area, that includes materials, supplies, equipment that is de developmentally appropriate. This center will also include writing materials and various types of paper. There's a great one in the lab. I hope you take note of it. Your text on page 107 mentions the language center. And there are a listing of 39 different kinds of materials and supplies for the language arts center. Be sure you read through that. There are also uh, 19 categories under types of books in the literature section. There are alphabet books, child-made books, all kinds of types of books. And different types should be present in a classroom. And they should be rotated as the need and interest arises with young children. In other words, you won't have the same book in there that you had on day one of the class you will rotate them throughout the year. Multicultural books uh, should include a variety of different families, various diversities, and pictures of each child's family should be part of the environment. 
I think it's great to have a family book that the children actually put together from photographs maybe that the parents send in with the children. It's a great thing to do, and children love to look at their book. Uh, I'm going to take time to give you a nursery rhyme. This one is called Hickory Dickory Dock, and I'm sure you probably know it, okay? Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, and down he run. Hickory Dickory Dock. You've probably heard that one before. That's the nursery rhyme. There's also a wonderful section in your book about flannel board. Uh, in all the years I taught, I used a flannel board every year. And if I didn't have one, I made one out of flannel that I bought at the store. Uh, you can purchase the figures through any of the children's catalogs, such as Discount Supply, Kaplan's, uh, Community Playthings, and other things. And I'm sure if you Googled it on uh, Google, you would find all sorts of ways to purchase flannel board figures that aren't that expensive. You can even make your own, too. Um, it's one of the best ways to get children's attention when you're going to read to them or even just tell them the flannel graph. Uh, some of the all-time favorites the children never get tired of is the Three Little Pigs, uh, Little Red Riding Hood, uh, different ones like that. Children just love them. And it's great to promote literacy and language. And often when I'd want to read a book to the children, I would start out with a flannel graph. As soon as they saw what I was doing, they headed right over to circle. I didn't have to do whatever to get them to come. They came on their own because they love flannel graphs. And a lot of times I was able to give each child one figure and let them help do it with me. It needed to be organized, though, okay, or the kids would be pushing each other to get up to the flannel board, and it would become a real mess. So you have to know how to do that in order to make it successful and have some very simple rules. Um, another thing that was good was when the flannel graph was over, I would leave it there for choice time with a few simple rules because I didn't want the figures ruined uh, and I usually made it so that no more than two children at a time would be at the flannel board at any one time. And they would love to recreate the story and tell it in their own words. Also, it's important to bring out again the use of puppets in storytelling. Literacy and language arts go right along with puppets. They foster the child's imagination and their creativity creativity and they can be used for storytelling. Many times I would use a puppet to tell a story and it was very, very effective and the and children really listened. And it's also, of course, good for dramatic play. All right, that's all I have for today about language and literacy. See you next time. Thank you.